I supported 1070. Uh, I was a co-sponsor of it. I voted for it. Um, I don't know that it's directly going to have a significant effect on small business per se. Uh, I, I know that I've, I've read in the paper that some businesses are being affected because some of the people that may have patronized the businesses are, are leaving the state or that some of them perhaps were owned by people that, are, that feel threatened by it. Um, I, I don't know that I can see that as a significant threat to the state. Uh, I, I know there are some issues with 1070 that may need to be modified down the road, but overall I'm a supporter of it. Uh, a lot of laws that we pass aren't perfect the day they pass, and I'm not saying that there's specific challenges that I could say, here are corrections that need to be made. It's not uncommon that a, a budget gets passed or a law gets passed, not just in Arizona, but anywhere in the country, uh, that may require some minor modifications later. I don't know that's the case with this, but I think it's possible. Uh, if you look at the benefits from it, I uh, I'd met with the Access a few weeks ago just to get a briefing there, and my point there wasn't to talk about 1070 or illegal immigration. My point was to get a better understanding of what the Access roles are and uh, what's going on there. And during our meeting, they gave me a printout, and it has categories of people that receive health care assistance or access in our state. And uh, it was childless adults, uh, children only, adults with children, a bunch of different categories. And I got down to the bottom one and it said unable to document. And uh, you know, childless adult, I can figure out what that is, but unable to document, I says, what is that? Uh, and what it was is the federal government requires uh, our hospitals and our medical people to provide emergency treatment to anyone that comes in the door. Uh, whether you have insurance, whether you're legal, doesn't matter who you are, what you are, whether you can pay, you get treatment. What the unable to document category is, is people that were not able to document themselves. Uh, now it could be maybe you fall off a ladder and somebody rushed you to the hospital and you didn't take your wallet, so you didn't have your license with you or any kind of, of uh, documentation to show who you are. In looking at that, you can't say that that number represents illegal aliens. But I've just got to think of my own life. You know, I've got five kids. We've had emergency room visits. We've had a variety of things. I can't think of a time that I couldn't document myself. And I, I think most of us probably wouldn't fall into the undocumented category. And when we look at the number, we have about a million three hundred people, three hundred thousand people on access. This was as of May 1st was the report that I had, so it's a couple months back. Of that million three hundred thousand, sixty-eight thousand fell into this unable to document category. Uh, when I voted for 1070, I didn't have that information. I, I knew there were some people that were probably receiving assistance that we were paying for that were illegals, but 68,000 out of a million three, that's 5% uh, of the total access population. And again, I wasn't able to get dollar numbers to correlate to these, but if the, the access budget is about a third of our entire state budget. If you assume that the emergency room care that that 68,000 would constitute, it's just an average cost. It's the same cost as a doctor's visit or any other visit, which is probably a poor assumption. I don't think you're going to go to an emergency room for the same average cost as you would somewhere else. You have to say 5% of that total access budget is likely for the care of legal aliens or legal immigrants. Uh, and that 5% may well be 10% if you assume is an emergency room twice as much as a doctor's visit. How much is the difference? And I, and I don't know. I'm just sharing my thought process with you. Uh, but, but the more I learn about these issues uh, beyond what I knew when 1070 passed, uh, the more avid of a supporter I am of 1070. Uh, I, I've just started getting some numbers on what the cost of education is. And I'm not an advocate of not educating people. Uh, I'm an advocate of legal immigration uh, and correcting the immigration issue and closing the borders. But the, the cost to educating people who, again, are not contributing to the tax rolls, they're not taxpayers, there's a significant cost to that, that, that money, uh, or to that service that we're providing. Uh, so I guess to answer your question, yes, I'm a supporter of, of 1070.